guys. Hi, here we are again. Still no school, and it's going to be a little while, so today I thought I'd read a story that you guys haven't heard before. Um, this was one of my son's favorite stories because he loves horses, and this one's about a tiny horse. His name is Einstein, and so this book is called A Friend for Einstein, The Smallest Stallion. This one is by Charlie Cantrell and Dr. Rachel Wagner. Okay. Far from the loud city streets, just past rickety rack of hard working tractors and behind the gates of a horse farm, there lived a little foal. A foal is a baby horse. His name was Einstein and he was the smallest horse ever born. He was a mini miniature horse. Every morning after a healthy breakfast of oats, milk, and hay, Einstein would follow his mother out of their stall and into the paddock to explore. He had hooves the size of quarters, it's teeny tiny, and he could walk right under his mother's belly. Being so low to the ground, Einstein could see things up close like speckles on the tiger lily, his favorite flower. In most ways, though, Einstein was like any other horse. He loved to gallop and hop and sniff and trot and lie in the warm sun. One day, while grazing in his pen, Einstein spotted a, her a herd of miniature horses nearby. They dashed and darted, they zigzagged and sauntered. Their shiny tails whipped in the wind, and Einstein jumped with excitement longing to join them. But as much as he might want to, the little colt just wasn't big enough to play with the other horses. When Einstein went to sleep that night, he dreamed the day that he could run with the herd. Can you see Einstein? Look. Do you see what he sleeps with? He sleeps with stuffed horses, pretend toy horses. There was no escaping it. Einstein was lonely. One afternoon, Einstein went in search of a friend. In the field, he came across a pair of kittens. He lowered his head to get a better look and ouch, one of them swatted his muzzle. They mewed and hissed, and scrambled and scurried. Einstein couldn't keep them straight as they wrestled each other. Feeling a little dizzy, he continued on his way. Those crazy cats were definitely not the right playmates for him. You see the kittens? Next, Einstein spotted some ducks by the pond. Quack, 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 quack. They said loudly as they waddled off clearly not interested in befriending a horse, even a little one. Maybe it was because he didn't know how to swim. See the ducks? Taking time out for a snack, Einstein noticed something in the grass. It looked like a rock, but then it began to move. All of a sudden, out poked a head, a tortoise. Einstein frisked in front of the gentle reptile, inviting it to play tag. The tortoise followed ever so slowly. Einstein waited and waited and waited some more, until finally the little stallion couldn't stand it any longer. This friend was boring. Bunny, basking in the glow of the afternoon sun, looked more promising. You see the little bunny? Eager to play, Einstein nudged it, but the sudden movement frightened the nervous rabbit. Einstein watched sadly as the bashful bunny hopped away. Poor Einstein! The animals he met were either too silly 
too stuck up, too slow, or too shy? Why was it so difficult to find a friend? Maybe the little stallion was just meant to be lonesome. Aww. He headed to the barn, where at least his mother would be waiting for him. Aww. Back by his pen, Einstein was in for a surprise. An odd-looking creature was poking through the fence. It was a dog with a snub nose, wrinkly eyes, and a head as big as the moon. She didn't have much of a tail, but what she did have was wiggling. Her name was Lily, like the speckled flower in the pasture. Slowly, carefully, Einstein scooted a little bit closer to investigate. The big dog opened her huge head and... What do you think she did? Slurp! Gave him a big kiss! Would you want a big kiss from a dog like that? Einstein pranced from one side of the field to the other, showing Lily how fast he could gallop. Lily joined in, keeping pace perfectly. For the rest of the afternoon, the horse and dog played tag, rolled in the grass, and loafed around together. It was as if they had known each other forever. The little horse with the big heart finally found his friend. The end. Isn't that nice that he was able to find his friend? I know we miss hanging out with our friends right now, but someday we'll get to hang out all together again. I miss you all terribly, and I'll see you soon. Bye.